Hello everybody, Ragtag Sagvi here. Welcome to the next episode. In the last episode, uh, we did the end non-lethally and got his nosy forgot. Now, a little detail I didn't know, know about this. If you actually start shooting at the face... Does it have to be the non-lethal rifle? Because I'm pretty sure that if you start shooting at the base, something was supposed to happen. Now let me grab a, a whole lot of different weapons. Because I'm pretty sure shooting at the base is supposed to trigger something. There we go, if you shoot at someone at the base, it will go into an alert, and they will send a helicopter out to kill you. Down it goes. So yeah, so you can just terrorize this base from up here. I don't know if the soldiers will actually be dead if you once you eventually get down there, but yeah. Ah. Yeah, you can just mess with the base, and I think they'll endlessly spawn helicopters until you either die or leave. Yeah, and another quick little detail I want to go over is actually here where the noodles are. If you look, you can see that Ada's boots are still here. Despite her having her boots when she got back to the base. I don't know why that is. Because that would explain why her boots got dirty and also comments, you know, clean your boots. Um, so yeah, a little detail I've just noticed. But anyway, time for the main um, juicy bit of this bonus video. Time? Okay, now it's time for us to take on the Fury. Let's see what we get if we take him out non-lethally. rage will incinerate you. I came back from space. As I returned, I had one vision. The world set ablaze. And do you know what I saw there? Fury! A great and terrible fury at being alive. Now, you're going to feel the scorching heat of that horrible blackness. Burn! Time to fight the fury. 
let's take him out non-lethally and see what kind of camo we get for defeating him. Now I've showed off I think pretty much everything I could about the Fury. So there's really not much to show about him just besides the boss fight. Now if, you ha now if you're doing a new game aim run, uh, having the spirit camo is really good because it hides, having, ah, hides your steps, me. allowing you to easily get near him and slice him up. Uh, let's quickly cure me of burns. I can shoot him with the noise we forgot from here. If you need to put out the flames faster, just remember if you see water pipes, try shooting them. I think. Yeah, I think they'll only leak water if you use lethal rounds. Tranks won't do it. Hope he's coming from that direction. Here I come! Is he? Oh shit, he's actually behind me. Now, usually rule of thumb, you can shoot a boss three times before they gain invincibility frames uh, for a few seconds. He sounds like he's having the time of his life. Wow, did he honestly not notice me? <laughs> Get out of the fire, snake! Where did that attack even come from? Is he behind me? Just go flying away into the thing to <laughs> Really? I go the peak and it's like, yep, you take fire. Alright, I think one more round of, sh of shots should finish him off. Wait, where did the Fury take damage? Oh, when I knife him, I was like... I looked up at his HP bar and like, when did he take HP damage? The knife would explain that. Where is he? He's coming from that direction, I think. No, he seems to be clearing out each tunnel. <laughs> oh! Or he'll be right in front of my face. One more shot from any of my non-lethal weapons should do it. I just need to find him.
Boss. This is the end of the Copras. You've got to live on. You're the only one left. I'm off. To join the shop. Mission Control, do you read me? I'm coming home. I see the earth. Alright, for defeating him non-lethal leave, you check behind you, you will find the uniform fire. Let's put it on and see what Sigurd has to say. So let's skip a few of his dialogues until he says it. You say Granin's shoes were rigged with a Sigurd. Yo! Eba said she set up a Snake, what's that you're wearing now? It's fire camouflage. The Fury had it on him. That camouflage seems to have fire-resistant properties. When you wear it, you'll only take half damage from flames and explosions. You won't ever get burned, either. Sounds like something the Fury would use, all right. So that is the purpose of the fire camo. If you wear this, you will take less damage from all forms of fire and explosions. This will be good, um, this is actually a really great camo to wear for the Fury fight since he primarily uses fire. And yeah, if you're going to be around a lot of explosives and you're worried about getting blown the hell up, uh, wear this. Now before we end, there's a few things I want to show off in Nausigrad itself. Uh, there's I think one or two codec calls I wasn't aware of. And uh, yeah, there's uh... Yeah, one or two things I want to show off before ending things off, so that way this bonus of video isn't too short. So the first show off, it's explosive properties. It's getting right next to these drums. As you can see, I took barely little damage from that. So I'll cut around to uh, when I get either certain radio calls or... Yeah, because there's actually some things I missed and I wasn't aware of. Well, I was aware of one of those things, but it has, I think, to be done during your first visit in Nausea Grant and cannot be done at any other time. So I'll cut to those moments. What a strange coincidence, though. Coincidence? Well, Rykov's full name is Ivan Rydenovich Rykov. And... Ivan is the Russian equivalent of John, and a common nickname for John is Jack. <sighs> you know, in Russian folklore, the youngest son in a family often receives the shabbiest treatment, but is actually cleverer than his brothers, and has the happiest ending of all. That son is usually named Ivan. I don't have any brothers. Really? I could have sworn you had several. What? So that radio call you can get if you contact the Major. Um. 
he will mention that uh, that that the name that the name can mean John, and then John is usually commonly known as Jack. This is a reference to two things. Um, first off, the name meaning Jack is a reference to Raiden, as that is Raiden's real name. His real name is Jack, um, and obviously Ivan is supposed to look like him. Uh, implying that he's either a descendant, uh, not a descendant, an ancestor of Jack, Ack, or whatever. Uh, but also, the colonel, the major says that I could have sworn you had several brothers is a reference to the sna the free snakes. As when, uh, when, um, Big Boss was a part of the project to get himself cloned, there was Solidus, Liquid, and, and, uh, Solid Snake. So, so yeah, kind of a cool uh, detail. Now to a few other radio calls. Now I remember Sigit commenting on vehicles in Nazi Grand. It turns out you have to be practically right next to the vehicle when you call him. Hey, those tanks look like Object 279s. Object 279s? Yep. We don't have a lot of details yet, but apparently they're a kind of heavy tank designed to operate in situations involving the use of tactical nuclear weapons. They're distinguished by two sets of double treads and a disc-shaped shield, which keep it from flipping over in a nuclear blast. Basically, the four treads widen the traction area and increase friction with the ground, while the disc-shaped shield deflects the blast above and below the vehicle. The tank is armed with a 130 millimeter cannon. It's also got a thousand horsepower diesel engine, which gives it a decent top speed. As far as we knew, it hadn't been formally adopted because of the high cost of production, but it looks like we were wrong. Anyway, those don't seem to be ready for deployment yet. You don't need to worry about them going anywhere. Just keep moving. The armored vehicle you see there is a BTR-152. The BTR-152 is an armored personnel carrier that was first developed in 1948. The design was based on the ZIL-151, a medium-sized six-axle truck. It was supposedly created primarily for use in motorized rifle divisions. Besides the standard two-man crew, it can carry up to 17 fully armed personnel in its personnel transport chamber. But stealing an armored transport and driving it around isn't part of the mission, bruh. Just leave it alone and keep going. Snake, that's an MAZ-535, a Soviet-built eight-axle tractor truck. During World War II, most of the heavy transport trucks the Soviets used were supplied by the US. But apparently their performance wasn't quite up to the standards of the Soviet military. The problem only got worse after the war as the size of the Soviet strategical rocket forces grew larger. The Soviets realized they needed a heavy transport truck with excellent cross-country capability to haul their ballistic missiles. So in 1954, they started work on a new truck design over at the SKB MAZ Design Bureau in Minsk, Belarus. And what they came up with was the MAZ-535 you see there. There are a lot of variations on the MAZ-535. What do the headlights look like on that one? It's got two of them. Then it must be one of the later production models. The early ones were equipped with infrared lamps. They look like they're used for cargo transport. But you're not into auto theft, are you? Just leave it alone and keep going. <laughs> I love that. You're not into auto theft, are you? I like that. So yeah, those are the vehicles. Yeah, I think he'll only talk about them during your first visit, and you have to be practically be standing right next to them for him to trigger the conversation. So with that, there is uh, one more thing, one or two more things I want to show off before ending the episode. So I'll see you there. Right now that we're in the in the lab itself, I'm so hungry. There's a few things we can do. Oh really? I can't throw this as the scientist? Are you for real? I can't throw food. Uh, I believe I need to wait until caution is over. Huh? Once it is, I'll cut to something worth showing.
First off, if you're in caution, um, Ivan will hide in the toilet. So you will always find him here. So if you throw out food, he'll pick it up and eat it regardless. If he eats something rotten, he'll go to the toilet. I believe you knock on the door. Someone in here. Give me a break. Huh? Enough already. Yeah, he'll get annoyed of, of you. But if you wait until he comes out while wearing the mask. If he sees your face with the mask on, although he pretended like I didn't exist. Hey. Uh, he'll do that, but I thought he's supposed to comment like, hey, they're good looking, because you're essentially him. Right, he's not doing it, but yeah, he's supposed to comment like, "Hey there, good looking." But yeah, but with that, I think we'll end the episode here, and in the next episode, uh, we will cover the escape of Nazi Grant and also Major. The Escape of Nausea Grant and also uh, The Sorrow. So if you enjoyed this episode, do you like the videos? It helps oh, tremendously. Subscribe if you haven't already. Leave a comment down below on your thoughts this episode and share the video so more people can discover my content and help the channel grow. And I'll see you all next time. Later.